This is News 3 Now at 5. Thanks for staying with us. Imagine doing your job or schoolwork on a computer system that is decades old. That's essentially what the Department of Workforce Development says it was trying to use to process unemployment claims. The DWD says it has since caught up on the backlog, but its technology hasn't. Jamie Perez joins us to explain. Jamie. We have seen some historic numbers of people filing their unemployment claims since the start of this pandemic. The DWD has done what they can by trying to hire more people and reassign roles, but essentially that has not been enough. I've lived every emotion like everybody else. Frustration, anger, you bet. Because you know what? It happened to me and I knew it wasn't just me. Art Valero is just one of thousands frustrated with the Wisconsin's DWD. They don't have any sense of urgency. A handful of people shared their personal experiences with the Senate this morning, trying to speed up a solution to what many are calling a failed system. The millions of phone calls that were submitted into these call centers, less than 1% got through to someone. Less than 1% in millions of calls in these call centers. So this is a huge failure. But the DWD shared its own experiences this morning too. It points to an outdated tech system that makes processing millions of claims a nightmare. Unfortunately, the pandemic hit and hundreds of thousands of people have now experienced our flawed system. Governor Tony Evers wants lawmakers to approve more than $5 million to get a new electronic unemployment system in place. But even if that happened today, the DWD says it could take up to five years to program. While the collaboration with Google and the short-term IT solutions assist claimants and DWD staff alike, they do not constitute a long-term solution. But it's been around since Richard Nixon was president. The system isn't new, and these problems aren't either. Last week, the legislature gaveled in on Evers' special session order, but didn't stay around long, with frustrated Republicans saying the DWD already has the money and ability to fix the problem. And Governor Evers said that this is a problem that both Democrats and Republicans need to work together to fix in the future. Until then, millions are at the mercy of this outdated system that has paralyzed the state economy. Jamie Perez live tonight. Jamie, thank you. And the Wisconsin DWD is out with the latest unemployment data. This is for December. The department says unemployment rates increased in all of Wisconsin's 12 metropolitan areas and also in all of Wisconsin's 72 counties in the month of December. That month, data shows the unemployment rates declined or stayed the same in only three of Wisconsin's 34 largest cities. There are some pretty clear hints that people facing evictions will get a few extra months relief. A moratorium set to end this weekend will likely be extended to March 31st. Now, assuming that happens, Gabriella Becerra explains what people who qualify for this protection need to know. Gabby? Well, first things first, it's not automatic. You need to take some steps to protect yourself. First, people need to go online and file a declaration, which is done under the penalty of perjury. And then a copy needs to be delivered to a landlord. This can be found on Wisconsin's Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection website. DATCAP makes it clear that this moratorium does not say tenants don't have to pay rent or late fees. It only prevents eviction if it can't be paid. Making sure that people have financial security while we're still in this emergency situation is critical. But it's also important for fighting the pandemic because if, if people lose their, uh, their ability to, to rent their house or rent an apartment, um, they could end up uh, in uh, a homeless shelter, they could end up in a different group facility, uh, and that reduces our ability to keep people socially distanced. This moratorium does not apply if a tenant is facing possible eviction for breaking other agreements, criminal behavior, or safety violation. And coming up on News 3 Now at 6, I'll share why some local leaders think that a moratorium is simply more of a Band-Aid than a cure. Gabby, thank you. A sunny Wednesday, but temperatures are dropping. Let's get a look at your first worn forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti on the weather patio. Gary. Well, Charlotte, the sunshine is nice. It didn't help temperatures very much, but those same clear skies will allow temperatures to fall off pretty rapidly tonight. Visible cloud track shows plenty of sunshine across southern Wisconsin. There have some, been some clouds to our south, but even those are thinning out. Doppler track only shows some snow showers downwind from Lake Michigan and Lake Superior, the typical lake snow belts. This morning, temperatures were in the single digits above 
above and below zero. Here in Madison, we're at three above. Uh, in Boscobel, Lone Rock, down in the Wisconsin River Valley, uh, where temperatures tend to be a little bit colder, it was down to one below zero in Boscobel and two below zero in Lone Rock. C current temperatures are in the mid to upper teens. Madison has been near 20 today, but you can see those temperatures dropping off by morning. We should be down to zero or even a little bit below zero, probably about minus two here in Madison. Look for a sunny but cold day tomorrow with a high of 18. But we do have alert days in the forecast for this weekend for potential accumulating snow. I'll tell you how much we can expect in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. Janesville police are working to figure out how a missing woman died. The 25-year-old woman's body was found on Woodman Road last night. That's just west of Highway 26. She was reported missing earlier in the day. Janesville police don't suspect foul play. and They don't think anyone else is at risk, but they have not shared the woman's name just yet. A health care provider in Rock County won't be allowed to vaccinate any more teachers for another month. Rock County health leaders and the state DHS say Mercy Health in Janesville sidestepped the rules and started teachers too early. Mercy Health vaccinated teachers in Janesville and Milton in the last four days, but the state says now the health care provider will have to wait until March 1st to give other teachers the vaccine. The health care provider systems director of pharmacy says he feels they did nothing wrong. We do not have any plans to jump ahead uh, at all. We will certainly follow DHS recommendations. But again, you know, I, I think we, we have a very efficient process for our clinics. Tonight at 6, we'll have the latest on how Mercy Health went above health agencies to make this decision. Today, the Department of Health Services says new COVID cases are trending down while new COVID deaths continue to be higher than the seven-day average. But health officials are dramatically increasing the number of people getting vaccinated. Yesterday, almost 22,000 people got the vaccine. DHS Deputy Secretary Julie Willems Van Dyke wishes everyone in Wisconsin had the vaccine right now. Getting there will take months and depends on a couple of factors. How much vaccine Wisconsin can get from the feds and how quickly doses can get to people. Earlier on Live at 4, she said deciding on who gets it when means weighing the risk of exposure and risk of dying from the disease. We know that 92% of deaths um, in from COVID have been in people over age 60. And so that is why that group has been advanced prior to other groups. And then we know if you're out in public serving other populations and you have to be for your job, like a healthcare worker or a police officer or a teacher, um, that that also puts you at risk. She says they hope to have much more vaccine by late spring, early summer. Wisconsin health officials announced yesterday that educators, child care workers, food supply chain workers, and prisoners are eligible to receive the vaccine starting around March 1st. Members of President Biden's COVID-19 response team spoke directly to the American people about the worsening pandemic. To combat the spread, the federal government has agreed to buy 200 million more vaccine doses, enough to vaccinate 300 million Americans by the end of the summer or early fall. Public health officials are still looking into the effect of the vaccine on new variants of the virus. We have to be concerned looking forward at what the further evolution of this might be. The CDC predicts that up to 514,000 COVID-19 deaths could be reported by February 20th. Coronavirus variants showing up across the U.S. are starting to impact testing for the virus. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration says it is asking medical developers to make sure tests can detect the virus even as it continues to mutate. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says one variant first identified in the U.K. has been detected now in 26 states. That includes Wisconsin. Moderna said two doses of its vaccine should protect against known variations that have emerged. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says it is possible for schools to safely reopen and limit spread of the coronavirus. Experts have been stressing the importance of in-person learning for students' development and access to essential services. In one study, CDC researchers looked at schools in Wood County, Wisconsin that opened last fall for in-person learning. They found that COVID transmission was 37% lower in school than it was in the surrounding community. Experts say that's because of precautions the school took, such as mandating masks and separating children into smaller groups. Saturday will mark the one-year anniversary of UW Health's emergency department caring for its first patient showing symptoms of COVID-19. Today, experts reflected on how far they've come since then. In just nine and a half months, we went from phase one, starting the safety trials, to a fully uh, efficacious and approved vaccine. And the 
efficacy is remarkable at 95% for both the Pfizer and the Moderna. And she says when UW Health saw its first COVID case, there were only 4,500 cases worldwide. Now there are more than 100 million. Today, a panel of experts reflected on their mistakes at the start of the pandemic as well. And Dr. Bernard says she originally thought COVID-19 would act like the SARS coronavirus of 2003. That transmission could be stopped through contact tracing and quarantine. It took time to figure out that COVID-19 could spread through people who had no symptoms. A Madison man accused of making threats against area business owners during last summer's civil unrest was sentenced to two years of probation by a federal judge today. 29-year-old Devonair Johnson pleaded guilty to extortion in November. Police said Johnson was one of several men who demanded free food and drinks in return for not having a business destroyed by protesters. Police also released video of the confrontation and struggle between officers and Johnson that showed him run from the police squad car and police regaining custody of him in the middle of West Mifflin Street. Johnson admitted that his conduct was intimidating, scary, and wrong during his sentencing memorandum. Officers in Wanakee are grieving the loss of another canine officer. Izzy died unexpectedly after a routine spay procedure earlier this month. She made it through surgery but had recovery complications. Officers are waiting on her necropsy results. Izzy was the department's second K-9 officer to die just within the past year. K-9 Thor died after an illness over the summer. Community donations helped fund both of these positions. Wanakee's police chief tells us officers are still trying to process these deaths and will look into the idea of another K-9 officer in the future. Still ahead on News Now at 5, a new U.S. terrorism alert warns of the potential for violence amid lingering anti-government sentiment after the election of Joe Biden. And coming up tonight at 6, officers from the Madison PD started getting their vaccines today. We'll have the latest on those efforts next hour on News Street Now at 6. A rough day on Wall Street. The Dow tumbling some 634 points. The Nasdaq off more than 355. The S&P lost 99. We'll be right back. The Modern Farmhouse look is here to stay. And we have it for less at Slumberland Furniture. Use a beige or light gray sofa as your base to build on. Add home style pillows and unique farmhouse accessories. Get your current look for less at Slumberland Furniture. Update any room of your home with Dutch Boy Paint from Menards. Dutch Boy Forever is an interior paint and primer in one with arm and hammer odor reducing technology. It offers advanced washability and stain resistance to block common household stains. Plus, we can tint your paint to match any color in your home. Pick up a gallon of Dutch Boy Forever paint and primer in one today for only $27.98 during Menards Home Improvement Sale. Save big money at Menards. Imagine facing Wisconsin's bitter cold winter without a warm home, or the blistering heat of summer without power. Then having to make the tough choice between eating or meeting other basic survival needs. Unfortunately, over 200,000 of our neighbors in need will face this difficult decision with no place else to turn, including those who are now unemployed due to the COVID-19 crisis. Keep a neighbor in crisis safely in their home during these difficult times by supporting and donating to the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund today. Still a traffic jam, just better views. Still your to-do list, just getting more done. Still packing up, just a little easier. The Chevy Silverado, making life's journey just better. Right now, get $4,750 cash allowance on this 2021 Silverado. Plus, current Chevy owners with an eligible GM credit card get an additional $1,750 total allowance. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. prices? Then get more ways to save at Pick and Save, where you can find personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. All for prices that are lower than low. On food that's fresher than fresh. Pick and Save. Fresh for everyone. Incredible savings on mattresses during the January mattress sale at Slumberland Furniture. Start your year off with a great night's sleep. Get a Sealy Memory Foam Queen Mattress for $349. Comes conveniently in a box. The January Mattress Sale at Slumberland. Hey folks, Thursday morning we'll preview a big vote at the Capitol on the statewide mask mandate. And the disproportionate effect the pandemic is having on women. We'll see you starting at 4.30 on News 3 Now this morning.
Waking up to stuff like this should never be a surprise. Watch News 3 Now First Warm Weather so you always know what's headed our way. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. The Homeland Security Department has issued a national terrorism bulletin warning of the potential for lingering violence from people motivated by anti-government sentiment after President Joe Biden's election. The bulletin suggests the January 6th riot at the Capitol may embolden extremists and set the stage for additional attacks. The department isn't citing a specific threat, but DHS warns, points rather, to a heightened threat environment across the United States that it believes will persist in the weeks since President Biden took office. Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont, who will be presiding over former President Trump's second impeachment trial, is back at work now. The 80-year-old Democrat went to the hospital yesterday just hours after he swore in his fellow senators as jurors in the trial. Senator Leahy will preside over the trial, which Kentucky Senator Rand Paul tried to have dismissed on constitutional grounds yesterday. This proceeding which would try a private citizen and not a president, a vice president, or civil officer violates the Constitution. The effort failed, but only five Republicans sided with the Democrats. Seventeen Republicans would need to join with the Democrats to convict the former president of inciting the deadly assault on the Capitol. President Biden signed several executive actions to address climate change. One of them directed the Secretary of the Interior to press pause on any new oil and natural gas leases on public lands and offshore drilling. He emphasized that does not mean he is banning fracking, but he does want an increased emphasis on clean energy. While there could be job losses in some energy sectors, President Biden is promising innovation to create new jobs and alternatives like solar and wind. The president also announced the formation of a climate task force and said he will host a Leaders Climate Summit on Earth Day, April 22nd. All right, let's get a look at your first warm weather. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti here. You know, when it comes to climate change, our winter coldest time uh, period has been warming up steadily over the last uh, 40 to 50 years. Since 1970, the temperature, the low temperatures at the coldest time of the year for Madison have increased by an average uh, or by uh, 4.1 degrees since 1970 to now. And you're seeing that in the overnight low temperatures. So far this winter, we've our coldest temperature has been zero. I'm expecting a low of two below zero by early tomorrow morning. That'll be our first below zero temperature of the winter. Normally, we have 17 days where temperatures are below zero. Last night, we were in the single digits here, but to the north and west, those temperatures were below zero, especially across northern Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin. A lot of that has to do with the snow cover. There's not as much snow cover in central Wisconsin or very little, if any, snow cover over parts of southern uh, upper Michigan and far northeastern Wisconsin, whereas the thicker snow covers in the southern part of the state into Iowa from that last storm system as well as to the north and west. Doppler track right now, free of precipitation across Wisconsin, really the only snow to speak of is downwind from Lake Michigan and Lake Superior, but even that is pretty light. Three things you need to know. It will probably go below zero for the first time here in Madison. I'm looking for a low of two below zero. Tomorrow, look for high temperature in the upper teens. Snow will uh, start developing from late Saturday afternoon into Saturday night and Sunday morning, probably looking at about uh, several inches of accumulation there. And another system brings the potential for accumulating snow in the Thursday, Friday period of next week. For the storm this weekend, we're looking generally at about a two to five inch snowfall probably two or three inches up by the Dells, maybe three to four inches around Madison and five inches or so right along the Wisconsin-Illinois state line. Again, these numbers could fluctuate a little bit, but the computer models have been a little more consistent on the snow for late Saturday afternoon into Saturday night and Sunday. The storm for next week, European computer model, shows a major winter storm up through Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin. Lighter snow amounts here. The GFS computer model from the U.S. government shows the heavier snow more likely over southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois. So a lot of conflict in the models. They are in pretty much in agreement there's going to be a major storm. It's just a question as to where that's going to track, and that's still uh, quite a ways out, uh, over a week. Right now, our upper-level winds are from the west and northwest, bringing down a little bit of cold Canadian air, but for the most part, because of that flat flow of the jet stream, it keeps the coldest air locked up to the north. You can see a big storm system along the west coast. That'll become the weather maker for the weekend. In the short term, a system passing to our south, bringing some snow into parts of Illinois and Indiana, but even the clouds are staying south of us right now. So with the clear sky, and the relatively light northwesterly winds. These temperatures that are in the teens right now will drop off pretty rapidly overnight, looking for low temperatures to probably be below zero through much of southern Wisconsin. So look for a clear to partly cloudy skies overnight, partly sunny skies tomorrow. Then as we head into Friday, those winds become a little more southeasterly. That will start temperatures back up into the mid-20s, and then the next weather system starts to arrive uh, on Saturday. We'll see 
plenty of clouds from Friday night into Saturday morning, and then we'll see uh, after that uh, the potential for some snow. Six to ten or eight to fourteen day temperature outlook calling for below normal temperatures over much of the western two thirds of the country and above normal precipitation through much of our part of the country. So for tomorrow, look for a high temperature of eighteen degrees with mostly sunny skies, a cold day overall. Seven to ten day forecast again Friday uh, back up to twenty five. Do have alert days in the forecast for Saturday afternoon through Sunday morning for that potential for accumulating snow and then again another storm system with the potential for more accumulating snow in the Thursday Friday period of next week and then after that temperatures could really drop off toward the end of next weekend and beyond as we take a look at first warrant traffic right now uh, not seeing any problems on the Beltline uh, belt uh, travel in either direction about a 15 minute commute between University Avenue and I 3990 if you're heading out of Madison 26 minutes down to Janesville on I 3990 uh, from the Beltline southward only 16 minutes to Sauk City on US 12 from Middleton and from downtown to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue and US 151. It'll take you 19 minutes. That's your news three now for sworn traffic. Gary, thanks. There's more to come at five up next. The Brewers home field look a little different this year as new signs for American Family Field are being installed today. Stay with us. News three now first worn weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Dear Winter, it's been fun getting to know you. Sleep, blizzards, ice. I love that you don't hold back. We didn't take it personally when you tried to bury us under six feet of snow. It's cool. You do your thing and we'll do ours. Stay chill. Toyota Trucks. Right now, you can get $500 customer cash on a new 2021 Toyota 4Runner. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. I'm a little old to count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. We used to pretend like we were flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still ski free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. Finding the perfect pillow can be overwhelming. So many cheap pillows out there. Are you really getting the quality and support you need for a great night's sleep? That's why Denver Mattress turned to a nurse. I've been recommending Doctor's Choice for 20 years. And while finding a great mattress is important to a healthy, restorative sleep, you also need the right pillow. The Doctor's Choice pillow by Denver Mattress is the only pillow that I use and recommend to my patients. So follow the doctor's orders with the Doctor's Choice pillow. Packed with hypoallergenic down alternative microfiber and made in the USA at our very own Denver Mattress Factory, the Doctor's Choice pillow provides the ultimate neck curling comfort and support. And for a limited time, when you buy one Doctor's Choice Jumbo Pillow, you get the second free. That's right, two pillows for only $69.99 plus free shipping. And every pillow comes with our 365-night better sleep guarantee. Shop in-store or online and get your Doctor's Choice Pillow today. But hurry, this offer won't last. At U.S. Cellular, we're building a powerful 5G network that works without interruption in the places you wouldn't expect. And with every plan at U.S. Cellular, you get access to 5G at no additional charge. So no matter where you are, U.S. Cellular's network always keeps you connected in the places you need it most. At U.S. Cellular, all of our plans include 5G and get unlimited data for just $30 a month with four lines. U.S. Cellular. Fusion has it all. Modern styling, spacious interior, plenty of power. Even help to inspire confidence. Ford Copilot 360. NHTSA 5-star overall crash rating. 5-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. So while life is full of compromises, Fusion isn't one of them. Choose Ford Credit Flex Buy in 2020 Fusion with 0% APR for 66 months with an increase in monthly payments after the first 36 months plus 3,500 cash back. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. 
Friends and family are gathering to remember the legacy of Hank Aaron. The funeral for the baseball legend was held today in Atlanta. The private service held at Friendship Baptist Church. Luminaries ranging from former President Bill Clinton, former Atlanta Mayor Andrew Young, to former baseball commissioner Bud Selig were all in attendance. Hank Aaron died Friday at the age of 86. Former Brewers catcher and the current voice of the Brewers, Bob Eucher, reflected on his friendship with Hammer and Hank. To be a part of what he was and what he championed throughout his time um, and hopefully um, a much better place for him. Uh, that's what I'm thinking. And um, I, I, can, I can see his laughing and smiling. I can see him every day. In honor of Aaron, the Brewers will wear the uniform number 44 on their sleeves throughout the 2021 season. Meanwhile, the Brewers' home ballpark name change is starting to become a more visible reality as signs around the stadium start to change. Crews began removing the old Miller Park signage around the stadium and replacing it with the new American Family Field logos and signs today. American Family Insurance bought the naming rights to the stadium after Miller's parent company decided against renewing its contract with the stadium. American Family Insurance is reportedly paying $4 million per year over the next 15 years for the naming rights about twice as much as Miller Coors was previously paying. The amount of LED lighting inside these signs is a, is a, it's a mile long of LED. So each individual letter and element within the sign has a, lights, LED lights inside of it so that it illuminates at night. So where will the old sign go? Former Wisconsin Badger and Wisconsin native J.J. Watt joked on Twitter that he would take it. The Badger men's basketball coaches will be rocking some new kicks tonight for the Suits and Sneakers Week. Coaches around college basketball wearing these sneakers to bring awareness and support to coaches versus cancer. Badger coaches will also be wearing different colored laces signifying each coach's specific fight. Head coach Greg Gard will be wearing gray laces for brain cancer, which his father passed away from. Assistant coaches Joe Krabinoff and Dean Oliver will wear pink for breast cancer. And Lando Tucker will wear yellow for childhood cancers. The Badgers will face off against Maryland. That's tonight at 8 p.m. A final chance of your first one forecast in just a moment. Stay with us. sale at Furniture and Appliance Mart. You pay what our friends and family pay on top brand appliances, plus special doorbusters like these while supplies last. And no interest financing for 18 months at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley Home Store off the belt line. Millions of customers are leaving their providers and switching to Spectrum. And if you have satellite, it's not hard to see why. Because unlike satellite, Spectrum gives you all the services you need, like internet and TV from one provider. They do? Yeah, they do. And Spectrum has the fastest download speeds with the most reliable performance. Get Spectrum Internet with speeds at 200 megabits for $44.99 a month. Call 833-909-4499. Spectrum wins on TV, too. Unlike satellite, Spectrum doesn't have an ugly dish to install. And you get exclusive premium original content with Spectrum originals. Wow, really? Really? Plus, Spectrum has more free HD and free on demand. Get Spectrum TV from $44.99 a month. Call 833-909-4499. And unlike satellite providers, Spectrum doesn't have contracts or early termination fees. We'll even buy out your current contract up to $500. Switch to America's fastest growing internet TV and voice provider. Get Spectrum internet and TV from $44.99 a month each. Ask about our easy self-install options. Call 833-909-4499. Right now, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. $10 a month, no commitment. 2020 is over. Make your move today with tons of variety in our clean and spacious clubs. And spread out while you work out with cardio distancing and our new crowd meter. Plus, use our app to get moving anywhere. Your fitness is essential. Join for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Hurry, this deal ends January 27th. Five Madison area locations. Sign up for $10 a month. Stop in today. You never know what winter has in store. Ford SUVs help keep you prepared. Chilly mornings, you've got remote start. Slick roads, you've got confident control. Snowy terrain, shift drive modes on the fly. Whatever the forecast brings, Ford SUVs are built for weather. Choose four credit flex by on 2020 Escape. Get 0% APR for 66 with an increase in payments after the first 36 months, plus 3,000 back. Culver's is a family restaurant. 
To me, that means being the place that puts a smile on everyone's face. We're famous for our cooked-to-order butter burgers and frozen custard made daily inside our restaurants. But we've always believed more menu options mean more ways to brighten your day. We source the finest chicken to bring you our tenders and chicken sandwiches. And our cheese curds. They're a Wisconsin tradition we're proud to share with you. So take the next meal shift off and let us take care of you. Welcome to Delicious. During the Friends and Family Sale at Ashley Home Store, save at least 30% and up to 54% off furniture doorbusters like these. Plus, take a bonus 15% off our sale prices at checkout and interest-free financing for 18 months. Only at Ashley Home Store. Coming up here on the CBS Evening News, with rising concerns about new COVID strains circulating here in the U.S., the travel restrictions the Biden administration is considering. Plus, new terror threat as Homeland Security officials warn tonight about domestic extremists inspired by the storming of the Capitol, as this California man is arrested with five pipe bombs and 49 guns. And the National Zoo may be closed, but our hearts are opened to the baby panda who now has his own live stream. That's all tonight here on the CBS Evening News. Let's head to Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti, who has a final check of our forecast. Gary? Well, it's cold out there. Temperatures are already in the teens, and they're starting to drop pretty quickly now that uh, skies are clear. At least the, the wind chills should not be much of a factor because the winds will be generally pretty light. But I'm looking for a low temperature here in Madison of about 2 degrees below zero. Temperatures will get back into the upper teens, high of 18 for tomorrow with mostly sunny skies. The uh, 7 to 10 day forecast, though, alert days in the forecast for Saturday afternoon through Sunday morning for about 2 to 5 inches of snow accumulation, then some uh, quiet weather for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and another winter storm system affecting us from Thursday into Friday of next week. That also brings the potential for some accumulating snow. Could be followed by a blast of colder weather after that. All right, Gary, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us for News Now at 5. We're back in 30 minutes with the latest local headlines. CBS Evening News coming your way next. Stay tuned.